Hi, thanks for coming to my channel. This is Midnight Moon Tarot and I'm Diana. This is a brand new channel and I would like to invite you to subscribe and click on the bell so that you get notifications every time I upload new content. Um, I specialize in the Twin Flame, Soulmate, Divine Union connections and read tarot uh, related to that. I've had a lot of people contact me and want a video like top 10 signs you've met your uh, twin flame, your soulmate, divine counterpart, soul companion, and, and what the differences are. So this video is going to be on the top 10 signs you've met your twin flame. Okay, the first sign you've met your twin flame is um, this immediate intense connection to them. Um, you feel as if you might have known them forever, you know, even though you just met them. Uh, you will find that your conversation just goes on for hours and um, just, you know, unlike anything you've known before. I know that there's going to always be people that you've met and you just feel like you've known them forever. But this is different. This is on a completely different le level. Um, the second sign that you've met your twin flame is that somewhere in your life you've crossed paths with this person. Now it may be that you have some of the same friends but you never met them because they were in different circles or areas of your other friend's life. Uh, you may have um, gone to school in the second grade with your twin flame's best friend. Uh, there will always be some kind of connection to this person. Um, you may have uh, lived in the same places. You might have lived in the same houses at different times. You might have um, just, like I said, crossed paths somewhere and you didn't, you didn't notice or take note of it at the time, but you did, you got a little glimpse of that person. And then when you realize through conversation and getting to know this person that um, that that is something that you have in common and it makes it uh, gel <laughs> even a little more. The third sign is you may have dreamt of this person. Uh, they might have not necessarily been the main focal character in your dream, but they might have just been like, like in a movie how they have um, people in the background, you know, extras or whatever, but you will recognize them. There will be something about them that attracts you to them. It doesn't matter if they're old or young or fat or skinny or been burned in a fire or uh, have some type of um, deformity or maybe they're paralyzed or have an amputation or whatever. You don't even notice those things about them because it's the soul that's pulling you. It's it's uh, your soul that's pulling them, and you are uh, you, that connection is just so there that it doesn't matter if other people say things about this person. You still have um, that uh, recognition and that intense attraction. Okay, and the fourth sign is you are on the same spiritual path. Okay, um, you may not know you're on the same spiritual path. You may have forgotten like the veil of whatever is going on in the world and you just get busy with life and family and kids and parents and school or your jobs or whatever. Uh, you've forgotten completely about your spiritual path. You um, have fallen into mainstream whatever uh, that's been fed to you, that's been taught to you from a very early age uh, as to what your beliefs are going to be. You're not choosing for your own self. But when you meet this person, they will awaken in you and you will remember, <laughs> you will remember your path or vice versa, they will remember. It will trigger them to remember their path. Um, number five is the intense, intimate, and sexual experience that you will have with this person. It's, you know, love making is always wonderful, okay? But when you are with your twin flame, it is on such a completely different level. You can expose all of 
your thoughts, all of, um, all of yourself. Uh, you don't have to feel embarrassed. You don't have to feel ashamed of anything you say or want or uh, whatever. But it's also like on this deep um, etheric level, uh, there's like these, your souls actually merge during that point. And it's, it's, it's explicit passionately. And um, it just, uh, it makes you as if uh, you understand the whole world <laughs> during that, during that union. All right. Number six reason is, the number six way you will recognize your twin flame is more often than not, there is an age difference. Um, usually about 10 years, sometimes more. I don't know the reason for this, but I have observed it time and time and time again from things I've read, from things I've studied, from uh, people talking to me, from clients that come to me. Uh, one of the common things is there this significant age difference and that you know says to me you know everybody doesn't always incar incarnate on exactly the same time um, you know the universe works in weird ways my thinking is maybe because one or the other person would have more life experience and could be more of the teacher to the other I don't know. It's just, just my thinking. All right. The number seven way you will recognize your twin flame is they will piss you off more than anybody ever has. They will annoy you. They will irritate you. They will drive you out of your gourd. They will make you uh, more upset emotionally. They will hurt you emotionally. You will feel as if you have no peace All right, one of the reasons for that is you will begin to see in them what their faults are, <laughs> or they will hold up your faults to you, and you don't want to recognize them, you don't want to accept, you know, they will tell you exactly what's wrong with you. And you may not be aware that this was ever even a problem, um, you may think it would be fine just to go through your life and, and be a certain way or think a certain way or have certain ideals or values. And it may be so offensive to your mate that they can't, they can't tolerate it. Oh, they love you so much. And yes, there is that uh, sexual bond that you, you know, you can't get past. But this feeling of no peace and there's no peace because it's like, wake up, notice these things. This is what you need to learn. This is what you need to see. So while they're doing that to you, you may take your mask off and show it to them. And they're actually looking at a reflection of their own, their own self. They, they actually have some of the same the same, the same traits and some of the same faults. And this will trigger number eight, which is the runner response. Okay, so the runner is when it is so intolerable or there is this major tower moment um, that, you know, everything falls apart, it was never built properly, it's time to go off, reassess, work with these lessons that we we were given, um, you know, work on what uh, our flame showed us that they saw when they look into our eyes so deeply and intensely and they not only see their own soul but they they see your soul as well and so they are um, they are telling us you know our own reflection which is also their own reflection so we are separated for this while and we work on uh, whatever it is and then we will um, absorb these lessons and we will work through them and then we will return. Okay, the number nine reason is um, the telepathic connection. This is true and it's, it is significant 
even during the times of the runner phases. It can be true if the person is on a business trip. Uh, for whatever reason, you may be separated. There may be, be something going on for whatever reason. They had to travel and you're not together for a couple days, a night, a week, a couple months. Um, and if it's uh, during the, the runner phase, it might even be a year or more that you're not together, but you always feel those deep soul ties. You always feel um, when they think of you, you will, they will always feel when you are thinking of them. Um, you, you know, you can work on cutting those cords. It is impossible to do with your twin flame because you're the same. That would be like cutting part of your own self off. And it is, you can try, but it's not going to work. So no matter what you do or how you move on or how you distract yourself, you know, people, a lot of people go party or do drugs or, you know, alcohol or whatever to distract themselves from that pain of being separated uh, and, and torn from their twin if they are the one that was left. Um, or the runner does it to ignore their lessons that they were they were shown that they need to learn. But you will always feel that connection no matter what. All right, and the 10, the 10th, 10th reason. Okay, and there's so many more, but we're just going to do this quick little video here just to touch on it. We'll go into it more uh, later. And I'm even going to have um, a guest join me and, um, you know, go over uh, some of the deeper aspects of this. But the 10th, number 10, is that person feels like home. When you're with them, it's like, it's like when you've been on a trip. And as great as it was, nothing feels better than getting back in your own bed or your own comfy, cozy chair and just being, you know, peaceful in your own home. Um, it is like, I know when I met my twin flame, I moved to a completely different city and I hate that. I hate it so bad. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. So. I've never, whenever I've been uh, in a different city, no matter where it is on the globe, I can actually feel that I am geographically in a different place. I feel off balance. I don't know why. I'm very grounded in my home. But when I went to him, to New Orleans, um, I felt like it was home. Uh, New Orleans felt like home. That's where I choose to live, uh, even though we are not together. I still, you know, I've moved away, but I, I came back because uh, there's so much of him still here. Uh, and I still feel grounded to the city, but um, I, there's a connection. But um, it just, that person feels like home. And you will receive so much comfort. You are able to, um, no matter how much stress you're in when you are with them, no matter how much arguing you may have done that day, when it comes, you know, end of the day and it's time to go to bed, bang, you're out. Just like that, as soon as you lay in their arms and everything's wonderful. Okay, so those are 10 of the million signs <laughs> that you've met your twin flame. And I hope you enjoyed that. And we'll talk more on it later. I'm going to do one on uh, soulmates and soul companions. And soul companions are really uh, interesting because those can be your BFF for life. They might even have been a pet. Uh, you know, some people call them familiars, you know, if you're into that sort of thing. Uh, but um, soul companions are very important as well and very um, interesting. Okay, so you all have a great day. Bye-bye.